Yo, what's going on, boys? It's your man back with another review. Now, today we have SH Figure Arts Nappa. I know people have been waiting. Those people being me. This is actually a figure I've wanted for a very, very long time. And if you're into the SH Figure Arts game at all, you may have known that this guy is expensive. For some unknown reason he sells for about two to three hundred now and there's really no easy way to get him but shout out to justin for handing it over as a birthday gift shout out to him this has been a very napa new year now we'll get the box out of the way quick before we get into the big details so it is just a regular old window style shf box i believe this he was one of the earlier ones with this this guy is kind of old. A couple of poop stains on the back there. Don't mind it. Uh, I do not have the Scouter Vegeta. Because he is also about the same price as the Nappa. Which sucks because I'm a big Saiyan Saga fan. And these are main, literally, literally the main villains. But I digress. So, moving into the paint and sculpt on this guy. Which I think is very good. I think they literally have the likeness of spot on Nappa he looks like he literally just walked out the screen and is coming to destroy me and the armor it is the fighter's look from with the armor it's not like from the show or the manga and uh, I think Reese or soon they're going to be re-releasing this Nappa with a more accurate anime color so this is the fighter's version which I actually like because if you know about the Nappa corner combos then you'll like fighters but you can see all the paint and sculpt on this is all really nice I like all the detail on the armor, which this is the uh, same design as the Bardock. Uh, I don't think any of these pieces are reused onto the Bardock at all because he came out before. But I do think it all looks really good. And uh, before we get to it, one problem with these is they don't come off again. Same as the Bardock. Same issue, but prior to. So they never fixed it. You can see it looks really good. I think they did get the look spot on too. Like the armor looks perfect. The tail. Him and his underwear. I think they just got the look perfect. And the size too. Like he stands broad. He's huge. I think the figure is just a perfect representation of the character. So now we'll get into also a good part of the figure. Is the articulation. Now this guy. Uh, it's the same thing with the Bardock again. We're gonna, probably going to be mentioning Bardock a lot. But you really want to be careful with the areas where the thing rubs, like the armor or the arms, even these plates. Because with the white outline, and uh, I don't even know if it would matter what color it is, but just the high movement in the area, it'll really easily scuff up. And wow, Nappa, Nappa looks, Nappa looks good right here. Ooh, sorry, I'm getting distracted. But the, uh, it's very, all the high movement areas, I'd say watch out for a lot because the Saiyan armor scrapes. And if you're trying to crank it to get that ab crunch, you might just be scratching. And with, with these expensive figures, that's the last thing you want. So moving on to articulation. At the head, there's a double ball joint. So he looks up very far and looks down, buries his big chin into his chest. At the front, he does have a nice little bit of pivot on the side. Oof, this guy's a little crunchy. He's kind of fresh out of box. Uh, at the shoulder pad here, it goes up. And then it doesn't really inhibit the articulation. But the articulation on the arm isn't the best in the first place. He can get a, about that far. You probably could get a little bit more cranking it harder. But I'd rather not. <laughs> and then uh, he has a butterfly joint in there that comes out a little bit. Oop, just knocked the light over. This one definitely looks way better than the Bardock's one. So I'm guessing... Uh, uh, they did something completely different with Bardock because his shoulders are different and the thing is. Then ooh, putting it back in at the bicep here. Well, actually, at the shoulder, it does go all the way around. You just got to avoid the, the armor piece. And then at the bicep, you do get your nice swivel. Just the arms are so big that you really can't get them around the armor when he's standing there straight. So like down like this, you really can't move the arm a lot. You'd have to lift it up. So that you get the clearance to move. Yeah, that's a problem I have. <laughs> but moving on for the bicep, you got a, or a double jointed elbow. It works pretty good and it looks really good. I feel like a lot of the time double jointed elbows look a little goofy. But this guy's isn't the worst. They think they did pretty good. And then at the wrist, you get your usual swivel and then your hinge where you can change whatever direction you want it to be going. 
All right, well, another problem, just so I don't forget with these hands, is it's kind of like the brown on the outside is like an oval shape. It's not a complete like circle. So sometimes when you try and move it around, the handle gets stuck trying to turn all the way. So just be careful with scuffage there because you can see on the boot here, the brown does scuff onto the black. Uh, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, the brown does scuff onto the black. So you have to be very careful moving stuff like this because this is the last thing you want scuffed because brown looks awful on top of black. It sticks out too much. <clears throat> so now add the diaphragm here. For an ab crunch, she crunches forward about that far. You definitely, again, can get more if you keep cranking it, but you'll probably scuff it up. Back, he does very well, too. You could have him getting crushed and held up by Goku, break your back, you know. Nappa or a Vegeta, listen. It doesn't work, though. He dies. At the waist, there is a swivel here. And I wouldn't even, I don't even know if I'd use this because it's literally just a death trap of brown tail on top of white armor. I would be very, very careful with that. Like I said, at the fins here, every single one of them has a hinge. Uh, none of them can come off or move any other way. But just having the hinge helps out. And you can get the, the armored or the underwear Nappa look. So at the legs here, he does have a drop down joint, which is really good because he's so big. It's kind of hard to get the articulation. But using the drop down joint, he can kick that far forward. He can do pretty good back the underwear doesn't really inhibit it he goes out pretty decently to the side there is a thigh swivel at the top double jointed knee that works very nicely and like this one i kind of think that looks bad like the double jointed elbow doesn't look bad but his knees look pretty bad i don't know why but they made him like you can see they added a big ball on the front to kind of get the knee cap and it looks really goofy i'm not a fan of it standing up it's not bad at all but when he's in any sort of moving pose he looks a little goofy and then moving down here this part you gotta be very careful about because i already got scuffage but you got your swivel at the foot of course it can move down and up and then your ankle pivot is nice this is probably how it's scuffed though so be very careful and then you know it oh nice little toe joint going on for them walking and running poses if you all want Nappa and you want him just sprinting full speed, then this will work perfectly. Which I think the toe joint really helps with that. Alright, standing him back up, it's straight and tall. And sexy. Alright, don't want him to fall down. So now we can move on to some of the uh, accessories. So this is the only head that comes with a scouter. That it was way before the time of putting in another ear for them to interchange it with. So this is the only head you can use his scouter on. We'll get one more up close look. Just because I actually really like the scouter. And it looks really good. And that's kind of sad because it would look so nice on these other heads. And I know he really doesn't use the scouter a lot. Like he has it on at the beginning. Then once he starts fighting he gets rid of it. But I uh, still think it would have been nice to have the interchangeability. So we'll start with the heads here. He comes with this nice smirking Nappa face. And I think this is where you can really see this the character popping with this guy and how good the transfer was. All the heads are the same, just big bald on the back. And the this paint is very nice on these. And the mustache is really good too. No nothing at all went wrong with the mustache. They do all come on these little plastic thingies i don't even know it's like a t it just holds them up in the box i don't think there's any other reason for them next we have this upset or maybe maybe kind of angry i don't know i use this for like the napa mouth beam or if you got him yelling or something or coming in for a mean attack i use his face uh just going along with it for those who want to make napa mouth beam uh I use this figure eyes effect, just some, uh, I think it was the trunks beam attack. I, I literally just put the tip in his mouth. That sounded weird, but <laughs> I put that in there and then it kind of looks like the mouth beam. And I had him pose with it and it doesn't look bad. And the thumbnail may or may not be that. I'm not sure yet. So moving on to the next and final head. There's this. Uh, the Chiaotzu on his back head, or I used it for the over 9,000 scene where Napa or Vegeta breaks the scouter. I think it could work for either or. Uh, I don't have the Vegeta to do it, and I don't have Chiaotzu either, so just pretend. 
pretend you like chow soon or uh, it's over 9,000. That looks pretty good. All right. Never try stop motion either. I tried it. Not a fan of it. I could not. It's too, too much meticulous work. Whatever. So moving on next, we'll look at the hands. He comes with these more action kind of fighting pose hands. You got one for each side. On all of these hands, they did a really nice job with the, I guess it would be glove coming over and then the white strap over the thumb. I think it all looks really good and the paint is pretty clean on it. There's no real big mistakes and with black on white, that is not an easy thing to uh, do. So next he has these, I'd say they're like chop or running hands. Napa, he does a lot of stuff with the like chop hands like this. And again, all the paint and detail on these are really, really good. They're just huge, though. He's got some big hands. I think uh, the detail is really nice on them, too. Nice in between the fingers, and then the nails are all a little bit out, but not too much. Which is good. It looks really good. And then, for the last hand, we have his giant storm hands. I think this one looks really good, and this was a needed accessory. Because if they didn't put this in, oh man, I would have been heated. I also think they should have put in, uh, like, your your casual Dragon Ball hands. You know, like the Ki Blast, Kamehameha hands. I feel like every Dragon Ball character needs to come with at least a pair of those. But this hand, of course, does look good. And there you can run into some problems putting it on. Like, the way it, uh, it kind of lows in and you want to get the Giant Storm pose, it can just sit weird. And sometimes it doesn't look right. And you really have to finagle around with them to get it to work. But once you get it, it looks pretty good. And I feel like this is where big scuffage could come in. Because trying to finagle with that hand is where you get the scuffing. But other than that, I think the hands are pretty nice. They all interchange pretty easily. Because he's got, I feel like with the bigger figures, a lot of the time the ball joints aren't as tight and hard to use. And they just fit together nice and smoothly. This is one of those figures. The only thing is, you just got to be careful. Because when you're holding him, you want to make sure you've got a good grip on him. That you're not like, your hand's not going to slip and bust this thing right off. Because when you are when you do something like that, you got worries. I don't ever want to break my Napa. I'd cry. Probably cry on camera. You Please support me in the description when my Napa breaks. But moving this guy out of the way and finishing up here with his accessories, he comes with this nice little beam lobbing effect. Now, I'm pretty sure this is from Fighters. I don't think I've ever seen it in the show. And as you can see, it's that nice beamy effect. And kind of see-through plastic. It'll glow if you put light on it. And I think this is a really nice thing to add. Because he doesn't really come with much. And adding just a nice little beam effect is good. I feel like they could have done something different for the effect this is just kind of lame like I, I think this is just his normal key blast in the air for in fighters and uh it's kind of a weird thing to add i would have rather had like an explosion for the giant storm or like a mouth beam or something or the the ball he shoots at uh i think it's piccolo when he's about to kill him or when he does kill them i think there was a lot more they could have added other than just random beam but still, it is accepted, because any beam effect is a good beam effect. So now, bringing this guy back in here for some comparisons. Just turn up the light so you can see. We'll start with uh, just a couple of other SH figure arts. Of course, Bardock. And then Kaioken Goku. Now, the him and Bardock, I don't think they've ever met. But him with Kaioken Goku, I think they look great. I haven't tried it yet, but I've heard that you can 100% get the Goku holding him up pose when he kills him, or I guess breaks his back. You can 100% get that pose, and it'll look great because the Nappa looks good, and the Kaoken Goku looks just as good. Now, with Bardock, uh, I think this is kind of where it gets weird because I know Nappa is supposed to have more of a lighter color, kind of like Bardock. I know it's not exactly the same where it might be, but it's supposed to be lighter like that, and it kind of messes with the, the, like, look of all of them together when you have all the Saiyans because most of the time they have the same colored armor ish and then sometimes they don't but I feel like the next release Nappa that, that'll fix that problem so now I'm getting these guys out of the way we'll just move them to the left I don't want to drop nothing 
All right, now for just another random SHF and big character, we got Thanos. And then another big character, but also the next review coming, we have the big man King Dong, I mean King Kong. As you can see, these two make Nappa look like a little bit of a shrimp. But still, this guy, I don't even know if he stood up straight. This guy's big. But you can see, this would be the, if you have just a random assortment of figures, he could definitely fit. I mean, it's Nappa. If you know Nappa, he could fit in any display. And I think he does also scale pretty well. He's a nice, hefty figure. He's very heavy, very thick. It feels like you're paying for something you, well... If you got him for retail, it feels like you got a really good price, but nowadays, I feel like he's not worth it. For that much money, I'd say just wait for the next release, which kind of falls into the closing comments section kind of thing. Uh, I definitely would not recommend this figure right now. For the price he's at, uh, he is just too much. You don't really get a lot with him, and the figure itself is not worth that price. There is so much better figures you can get with that money. There's multiple figures you could get. It's crazy. But uh, I definitely would say if you're looking to get a Nappa, just wait for the next release. Because when that one comes out, this one is 100% going to go down in price. So you could probably get them for more reasonable of a price. And uh, I'm not sure about Scouter Vegeta though. I don't think he will be going down anytime soon. So that is all I got to say. I've been trying to cut down the time on these videos because I know I ramble a lot and they're very long. But uh, I still did it a little bit, and it's still a 16-minute video, but we do what we must here. We do what we must to survive. So, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I had a good time making this Nappa review. I'll see you, I think, two Thursday or Friday. I'm going to put up the Kong review. So, I'll see you guys then. Hope you guys are ready for my monkey.